Hey guys, welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage. I'm Mike Montanari. If it's your first time here, welcome. We are about to install a Tremec 600 TKO 5 speed. Ooh, and I've never done this before, so it should be fun. So subscribe if you want to stay tuned to this chaos and mess and opportunity for learning. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we'll get it on. So if you're wondering why the engine's out of the car, well, check out this video over here. That is how it all started. Broke a lifter, how to pull the engine. And why not take advantage of that opportunity to upgrade? So if you missed it, we just put in a, a hydraulic clutch master cylinder while the engine's out of the engine bay. It's easier to work around. And next step, while the engine's still out, is to actually put... The bell housing on. So here's what we're going to do today. To put a Tremec on, the tolerance for coaxial alignment of the input shaft on the transmission and the crankshaft of the engine has to be within five thousandths of an inch, which seems ridiculous, doesn't it? Whew, so that's what we have to measure today. We actually have to measure the runout, and the runout is actually how concentric this hole is with the dry shaft. And so we're going to measure, figure out where this is centered now on the current dowel pins, which are stock, figure out our measurement, figure out how far it's offset, and then they have these special offset dowels that we put in the block to counteract how far we're off. Sounds like a mess, doesn't it? So what you're going to need is a dial indicator. Now, I know that uh, Silver Sport Transmissions, who I got this from, has a kit you can get. And I recommend it because uh, it seems like it's probably perfectly matched for this scenario. But what I did is I used my uh, dial indicator that I used to figure out our um, our push rod length. Remember that video? I used this. So I took it out of that kit, and then I went to McMaster Car. Those of you that are engineers or work in facilities management know who McMaster Car is. They're the original Amazon. You can go there and get any fastener you can think of. And if you order it in the morning, you'll get it the same day. So when I did the master cylinder, um, there were some fasteners in it I wanted to get that had shorter uh, size heads on them. I got them the next, I got them the same day. Awesome. So anyway, that's where I got this. This is a flexible, looks like a snake, right? Holds the dial indicator because we have to mount this. To the crankshaft or to your flywheel. I frankly already did the mint. I tried it with the flywheel. It doesn't stick very well. It's actually a powerful magnet and just sticks right on. And then you can put this in the right spot and lock it down with this lever and it keeps your dial indicator in the right spot. So uh, I think the next step here is frankly for me to put the bell housing on. We have to torque it down. So I'll go ahead and put it on and I hope it fits. I frankly don't know. And we will go from there. So if you haven't, subscribe and I'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, before I put the bell housing, I want to show you how this magnet works. So you actually, it has an on off switch. On off. I think that just um, takes the magnet away from that edge. But so when you stick it on something metal and you turn it on, it takes like 150 pounds of force to get that off. And so then we can get our dial indicator in the bore like so, and then lock it down. Look at that. So now when we spin this, this will measure how far off we are. At least that's the plan. So you realize that we only have like a four inch diameter hole to play with. So It'll be a lot of trial and error, I'm guessing. So um, we'll go ahead and, and go from there. Oh, 
off course. It doesn't fit as easy as the stock one. Uh, I have to get the attitude adjuster. That'll work. All right, we're on. I'll go ahead and put the bolts in. Well, uh, here's our first problem. I can barely get this bolt in because the head is hitting the, the bell housing. Oh, great. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and torque, torque these down. So we'll see where we end up. All right, I'm guessing 50 pound feet. I actually don't know. Well, guys, uh, since I can't torque this one, I'm actually going to call uh, Silver Sport and figure out if this is a problem or not. Um, so I'm going to take a break today, but it's going to be like a millisecond until you see the next part of this video. Um, so I'll be right back, literally. Hey, guys. So uh, I talked to Silver Sport, and they said that this happens. <laughs> um and to wait until we get our um, align our pins, our correct pins in, and then fully align the bell housing correctly. And then if you still have an issue with that hole, is to open it up. Not what I wanted to hear, but what else is new? This whole freaking project has been like this. I gotta change something to fit something else, so not a big deal, it's part of the hobby. Okay, now that being said, I wanna walk you through something. Uh, on our dial indicator project. So it's going to take me a while, I think, to figure out the correct mounting of this. So I'm going to probably play around with it. But the idea is when we when we hook it up and we have it on inside of the bore of the bell housing, we're going to preload this a bit so it can move both positive and negative direction. We're going to spin it around. And this is actually a two-person operation. Uh, it's just me. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try videoing a rotation and then I'm going to look at the video and determine where the highs and lows were and just trial and error it. So, uh, but the premise is you want to, you want to spin it around. You want to, you want to watch and see where the max sweep is. So if you go to like there and it comes back, you want to mark that on the bell housing because you want to find your closest point on the bell housing to the center line. Then you go back to that spot and you change the dial face. I don't know if you can see, but the dial face spins. So you can set it to the zero mark right here. See, so I don't have my glasses on. I can't see. So we set it to zero and then we do rotation and figure out where the max where max is it's typically going to be on that 180 degrees on the other side of the circle right so your closest point is on one side your furthest point is going to be the other and we take that measurement that's called the total indicated run out the run out is half that so you take that number divide by two that's the number you have to offset everything and that's the plan so i'll be back all right, guys, so you can see I've been busy. Uh, I didn't film it because it took me like 45 minutes to figure out the best angle of attack for the dial indicator holder, and I wanted to make sure I was as close to flush with the face with the dial indicator and perpendicular to the radius. This isn't ideal, but we made it work. Uh, so that said, I went ahead and filmed myself rotating the crank because this is a two-man operation. I used my camera. And I figured out where the max sweep was uh, for the dial indicator. And so on this side is uh, the closest to center line. So I set my dial indicator at zero. Filmed myself again, which I'll show you right now. So check it out. So I, it's at zero. And went ahead and rotated it. And you can see where the, the dial pegged out. And it's right over here. So I got that to be repeatable. 
So this this is why I keep adding tape. And this is this mark here is hit three times in a row. And I hit zero three times in a row. The offset is negative 38 thousandths. So if I pull on my dial indicator, you notice that it goes positive. It was going negative. So that means the dial indicator was pushing out. It was pushing this way. That means we were off center, furthest away from center line by 38 thousandths. So half of that is 19 thousandths. So we need to push the bell housing 19 thousandths in the opposite direction. So that way. So I have to order special offset dowel pins and we'll put them in the block. But the next step here is we're going to take this apart and get the stock dowel pins out. And that I guarantee is going to be an adventure. They just look like a pain in the ass. And uh, we're going to find out. So here we go. Oh, we did it. It was a struggle. Pulled it off. So I highly recommend you get the uh, indicator set from Silver Sport because it's obviously set up to do exactly this job. I had to do a workaround, which took longer. Finally got to the numbers, which I wrote on here. So I wouldn't lose them on a piece of paper. Smart, right? <laughs> so I, I put my total indicator run out of 38 thousandths here. Um, my offset is 19. There are a certain set of range of pins I have to get from Silver Sport, which will send send me. I'll video putting those in, how to set those up. I put on here how far to move uh, the bell housing so I wouldn't forget. Uh, what else did I forget? So um, next video, we'll go ahead and cover how to put the offset dowel pins. In. I'm sorry. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to actually take the dowel pins out. I already tried with a, a pair of pliers to see if they had twist not looking good so that should be an adventure i'm guessing <laughs> another adventure we get to go through uh, so you know the drill subscribe if you haven't so you can keep track and build them fast and drive them faster see ya ah!